Lord, folks, great to see you. The Lord bless you tonight. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Hope you're being blessed this week. I know we have been so. We're here to worship the Lord and hear from His Word tonight. And we're praying that the Lord will speak and encourage and inspire each and every one of us. Good to see David Kincaid out among us again in the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord has given a land of good things. I will bless him and make him mine. upon 
your voice be a sweet sound in his ear tonight. May the people's church worship tonight be a sweet sound in his ear tonight, no matter what you're going through, what you're facing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray tonight for Noreen Larmer's family. Our brother passed away, Marcus. Also, John's, John Galloway. Pray for his family. John passed away. And Debbie from Ballyclare. Her family as well. Her stepdad, Tommy, passed away. So there's three grieving families. Would you remember also baby Amy Devlin and me baby Georgia? They're just born and they've got complications. We Spencer, uh, his operation was cancelled, but now they've given him a date in a couple of weeks. Vicky's mummy has had a bad fall. Christine's mum also has been in hospital. If you've an unspoken request, lift your hand. And Ivy's sister and niece both have been taken down with this COVID and are in hospital. So pray that the Lord will undertake. If you have an unspoken request, just lift your hand tonight in the name of the Lord. And Jimmy Higgins, I know he's knocking about there somewhere. Jimmy got good news from the doctor. So it's nice to hear some good news as well. And we also have good news because they've taken away the social distancing, the last meter distancing. So we are planning to get in on Sunday week. So just praise the Lord for that. We're looking forward to that and we're preparing. So we've got some new regulations to put in for ourselves to keep us all safe. And we'll have that ready for you uh, for the weekend. But we're going to be here in the driving on Sunday and next Wednesday. And then we're looking forward to getting in, God willing, on the following Sunday. So praise the Lord. We've waited this long. Yep. God's been good. Amen. Now let's look forward to getting in together as God's people. Father, thank you. For your son, the Lord Jesus. That's why we're here tonight. Because he's lifted us out of the mire. That's why we can sing. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. Lord, tonight, may you hear all our voices. And there are people sitting in cars, Lord. And they're going through serious things, Lord. Things that only you know. And I pray tonight for those sitting in their car, Lord. Will you minister to them? Minister by the power of your Holy Spirit. To those in cars and to those watching at home online. We pray, Lord, that you will minister to the saints and that your name will be glorified in our lives. Thank you for the weekend past. Thank you for the goodness of God that follows us. And we say to God be the glory. Thank you for that young woman who prayed the sinner's prayer during the week. And again, we say to God be the glory. She's watching the programs. And we thank you, Lord, that through it she's given her life to Jesus. So, Lord, we're hearing good news. But there's also bad news, Lord, and there's sad news. And we pray that you'll comfort all those who have lost loved ones recently. Comfort them, Lord. And for the sick, Lord, will you touch them? And for them, we babies, Lord, will you minister to them as well? Father, hear our prayers, Lord. Bless Stormont tonight. Bless Westminster. Bless your church. And tonight, anoint Pastor John and bless your word. In the lovely name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, it is good to see you this evening again, brothers and sisters. And thank God for you. Bless you for being here. Will you turn, please, to Psalm 46, if you have your Bible with you. To Psalm 46, please. I want to read just the verses here. There's 11 verses. Hope this means something to you this evening. Psalm 46. And think you need to know that just I had another message finished yesterday for tonight I finished it yesterday and I was planning to bring it tonight but when I woke up this morning I knew I had to bring this I just knew I had to bring this this evening so we're just going to read this let, let it come to us it is the word of the Lord and listen to what it says here God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, 
think it's important that we understand what it's saying here, what it's suggesting here, because what's being suggested here is remo the removal of all that we were ever used to. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, there's things we get used to. Where I grew up was under the shadow of the Black Mountain. You knew it was there every day, season after season, week after week. You turned the corner of your street, you knew you would see the Black Mountain. But this is suggesting that even the things we get used to can be taken away. And even people that we thought maybe would be around, maybe even they are taken away. Though its waters roar and are troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, I tell you the world itself is being shaken at the minute. This is what it says in verse 4. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. You know, there's some things that will never be removed. There's some things we can depend on. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And may the Lord himself bless what we have read from his own word this evening it's verse 10 and the words of verse 10 that i just want to bring before you for a few minutes this evening because we need to remember this we need to keep it before us and i think also we need to understand it this verse 10 be still and know that i am god i will be exalted god says among the nations I will be exalted in the earth. That's what he lays down. That's what he affirms. Be still and know that I am God. But I think we need to understand there's some things that we need to know first that will help us be still. I really believe it's almost impossible to be still without the knowledge of some things and the proper understanding of some things. There are things we need to know before we can be still. This word says be still and know. There's things you've got to know that's going to help you be still. You see, a lot of people struggle with this. A lot of people find it hard to grasp it. And I know this is a verse that sometimes we are so familiar with. It's on plaques on a wall. It's written on the covers, the inside covers of our Bible. But a lot of people struggle with this. There's some things we have to know first before we can be still. You can't be still until you know some things. You know, this psalm reminds us of three things. Number one, that God is our protector. Verse one says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. What it's suggesting here is, 
the things we were always used to, even if they are taken away, even if they're not there anymore, though its waters roar and be troubled, even if trouble comes to such an extent, though the mountains shake with its swelling, it says, but listen, God is still our refuge. God is still our strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Brothers and sisters, tonight, let us reiterate again, that doesn't change. And that doesn't move. Also, this reminds us that God is our provider. There is a river, it says, whose stream shall make glad the city of God. You know, a river always brought provision, especially in primitive times, especially in ancient times. And if you think for a minute, every major city in the world was founded beside a river. The Lagan in Belfast, the Liffey in Dublin, the Tiber in Rome, and in New York, it's the Hudson, Hudson River. And Cairo, it's the, the, the River Nile because of the provision it provided. And God is our provider. This psalm reminds us of that as well. We need to know that. We need to keep it in front of us. Also, God is our powerhouse. Listen to verse 6. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. Listen, he uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. That's what the psalmist declares. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord who made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and he cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. And you know the overarching theme of those few verses really is God's power. God's power at work. But that power is in us tonight. That power is at our disposal as the Lord's people today. But it's really the words of verse 10 that I would love, would love us just to comprehend again and to go home with again brothers and sisters because it says here be still and know that I am God be still it says but it doesn't just say be still it adds something more it says be still and know that I am God do you know something a full grasp and comprehension of the sovereignty of God will bring with it a stillness. A full grasp of the sovereignty of God. And what is the sovereignty of God? It just means that he is king. It just means that he's still Lord. No matter what's going on in our lives. It just means the sovereignty of God just means he's still in control. He is still Lord, no matter what's happening. Because what this psalm is painting to us is a picture of everything being removed from people. The earth itself, the mountains. But it says we can still take heart and a full grasp of the, sovereign, the, the sovereignty of God will bring with it a stillness, a calmness, such a peace an assurance that's far beyond anything in this life. You simply can't buy this. But to have the blessedness of that stillness and peace, there's things you've got to know. There's things you have to know. And listen, there's things about the Lord that we have to know. And without this, you can't be still. Without this sort of knowledge, you're going to find it terribly difficult to be still when everything is going wrong maybe in your life. 
But there's stings about him we need to know before we can be still and know that he is God. You see, we cannot be still until we know that the one whose name we're gathering in tonight and we're gathering in his name, but we need to know he is God and what that means. There's some things we need to know about the Lord. And by the way, that's why I love Bible study. That's why I love studying the scriptures. Not to be theologically, intellectually challenged and impressed and all of that. The most exciting thing about Bible study is this. We can learn more about the Lord. Hope you'll understand that. Hope you feel that. I believe you do because you come back every week. But there's a possibility right now in our gathering tonight in the car park that we could know a little bit more about him. And maybe you've been a Christian for years. But the truth is there's so much more to learn about him. And when we grasp more of that, the impact of that on our lives is immense. Here's just a, a few things about the Lord we need to know that can bring that stillness and confidence into our lives so that we can say, be still and know that He is God. It's when we know, it's when we know He is our Redeemer. All starts here. It starts with this. We've got to know this first of all. He's my Redeemer. We know this evening that we're loved and forgiven as Christians. We know that for sure. And this speaks of God's greatest work and God's greatest attribute. This speaks of the cross, which was God's greatest work. And it speaks of his love which is his greatest attribute. And when we realize and remember and let ourselves recall that we mean so much to him, that we're so precious to him, that he was willing to endure on that cruel cross and pay the price. When we know these things and, and remind ourselves of these things, you know, it has an impact upon us. It brings us something that I mean something to him. And I know I feel him. And I know I let him down. And I know what I am in the flesh. But you know what? I'm precious to him. Yes. And you'll read in one of Paul's letters a, a, a wonderful line when he says, when Paul said, God forbid that I should boast, saving the cross of Christ. And Paul was a philosopher. And Paul was a theologian. But Paul was determined he wasn't going to boast in all of that. He was going to boast in what he said, the cross. And what he meant by that was this. He was going to boast that I mean so much to him, it hurts. I mean so much to Jesus, he was willing to bleed for me. And that means something to me, Paul said. I'm going to boast in that. I'm going to boast in how much I mean to him. That's why the hymn writer said, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. And it's the truth to me. He loves us so much that he gave everything for us to become his own. And when we become his own, it means something. It brings something about so much, in, in fact, and the knowledge and the faith of that, that the one who created it all values me so much that he bled. It brings a confidence, brothers and sisters. It brings a confidence and a stillness in your heart, even in the most troubled of times. Because you know what you're convinced of? He hasn't forgotten me. Yes. And many of us are parents. 
And we know how much we cherish our children. We would never forget them, especially in troubled times. And we align ourselves. He cherishes me. He loves me with an everlasting love. And he hasn't forgotten me. And that brings the confidence. And that brings the stillness in your heart. Even in the most troubled of storms. To be still and know that he is God. We know he is the redeemer. So did Job, by the way. And I don't know if you've realized it or not. Because in the midst of all this man was going through. And he went through so much right to the limit but Job in Job 19 in the middle of it all here's what Job declared it's remarkable when you think about it Job 19 and verse 25 here's what this man uttered here's what this man shouted Job 19 and 25 I know my redeemer lives right in the midst of his trouble right in the full extent of all that was happening to him. For I know, he said, my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at the last on the earth, and after my skin is dissolved, this I know, that in my flesh I will see God. Yes. You see, what I'm saying tonight is this. There's things we need to know before we can be still. You'll never really comprehend this verse. You'll say, how can I be still? And I know this verse is saying that, but how can I be still? But we'll never be still unless we know some things, unless we, lo we know that we're cherished by him. We know him as our redeemer, but also, brothers and sisters, as our refuge. As our refuge. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That's where the stillness comes from. That's when the calmness comes in. Even when the waves of trouble are high. God is our refuge. That sort of knowledge makes us be still, lets us have peace. Be still and know that I am God, a very present help in trouble. Do you know, a few weeks ago, you may have watched it as well, I watched the documentary that was broadcast on BBC at the time of the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And it was called The President's War Room. And it was a fascinating hour and a half documentary that just depicted the scenes of that Tuesday morning in New York, in Philadelphia, as the tragedies of 9-11 unfolded, minute by minute, the President's War Room, and, and I watched it glued to it for an hour and a half, it was fascinating, but what really spoke to me, there was a, an instance in it when they, they called the President the Eagle, and they had to get the Eagle away, they took him into the sky in Air Force One, and, and that was the safest place. But he wanted to come back. And he wanted to talk to the people. And they put him in a bunker. And, and said, you know, broadcast from the bunker. You'll be safe there. But he wouldn't do it. George W. Bush, he wouldn't do it. He says, I'm going to the White House. Because I'm speaking from the White House. And he'd done that. And he spoke from the White House. He said, if I speak from a bunker, it's defeat. But listen, we're still standing. And he spoke from the White House. And then a couple of days later, he went to Ground Zero in New York. And he stood in the midst of Ground Zero with the crushed iron and the, and the debris and the rescue workers who were still there. And here's what George Bruce said. And it really got to me. He says, a leader should be with the people in the midst of what they're going through. A leader should be with his people in the midst of what they're going through. And it really hit me, brothers and sisters, in that moment, that's what our Savior done. That's what our Savior done. He came where we are. And he went to the cross right in the midst of suffering. He put himself right in the middle of it. And you know something? A very present help in the time of our trouble. And what you're going through, he's a refuge. The covering power of God of heaven. It doesn't mean we won't go through things. 
It doesn't mean we won't be tested. It doesn't mean we won't feel the heat at times. But what it does mean is this. It won't destroy you. What it does mean is this. You're going to come out the other side. It means he will not allow anything to, for us to go through that we're not able to bear. Now, that has the power to let us be still and know that he's God. You see, there's things we need to know first. There's things you've got to know first. You'll never be still and, unless you know some things first, that he's your redeemer. Even Job was going through the extremity of his suffering. But here's what he said. I know my Redeemer lives. And brother, can I remind you tonight, you have a Redeemer. And sister, he's your Redeemer. A very present help in time of trouble. And your refuge as well. But listen, we need the end. He's also the restorer. Yes. Listen to this before we go home. This might mean something to you. He's the restorer. Thank God for that. Thank God for the power of restoration, brothers and sisters. That means even when we feel, he restores. Even when we're down, he lifts up again. He's the restorer. I'm thinking about those we're burdened about tonight even, who need restored. You know, he can do it. Those we worry about, even our loved ones, maybe those who have wandered from him. And brothers and sisters, we need to be still with them and know that he's God. God can bring the prodigal home. He can make them come to themselves. He can create in them the desire to say, I'm going to arise and I'm going to come to my father's house. And brothers and sisters, he can do it. God is the great restorer today. And you know, when you let that build up in you by faith, when you grasp that by faith and become convinced of that again, and I believe we have to battle in this for our loved ones. I believe there's a battle for our loved ones these days, especially young people. There's a battle going on, brothers and sisters, and that's why we've got to be diligent in our prayers. That's why we can't become sluggish tonight. There's too much at risk for us to become sluggish. We have to be diligent in our prayers because there's a battle raging. But listen, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. And we're praying for them that they'll turn. We're praying for them that they will be restored. But God can do it tonight. And when that rises by faith, and the enemy's going to throw all sorts of thoughts in your mind. He's going to try and convince you of everything. But listen, in the name of the Lord tonight, we can be still and know that he is God. He is God. He'll bring about that restoration. He'll turn things around. Listen, he'll even turn people. Oh, come on, let's believe that in the name of the Lord. You see, there's things we need to know. And what I'm saying is this, there's things we need to be convinced of before we can say, I'm going to be still and know that you are God. It is your Redeemer. Job knew that. Man, that he meant something to the Lord, and so do you. He's your refuge. You're going to find that solace in him. You're going to find that strength in him as well. But the restorer. Maybe you've lost out on something. Maybe there's a loss in your life, brothers and sisters. You know something? God can make that up. God talks in his word about restoring years. It's incredible. He can restore years. He can restore. And you know something? That has an impact. That does something we need the end right now. But may the Lord bless his word to our hearts this evening. You know, some people say, well, who was the Lord speaking to here? And he said, be still and know that I am God. But some writers think he's speaking to the elements. He talks about the, the sea roaring and, and the waves and all of that. And, and, and some writers think, well, he's speaking to the waves and the elements and saying, be still and not know that I am God. And others think, no, it, it's not the elements, it's us. But you know something? It doesn't really matter. He's still God anyway. And if the waves 
and wind can be still, then so can we tonight. So can we tonight. And may the Lord bless us. We're going to pray before we hand it back to Pastor George and Linda. But let the Lord strengthen you this evening. Reach out to him just as we end now. Reach out as Pastor and Linda lead us in this last song. Reach out, brothers and sisters in faith, and say, you are God, Lord. And I'm believing you, even for the impossible. Lord, hear our cry. Will you help us, Lord? Convince us again, even, in areas that we need convinced of. Overwhelm us even by your power and presence. Lord, thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what we have seen in our lives. Lord, we have seen you move mountains. And we believe you'll do it again. Lord, we have that faith tonight. And so we can and we will be still. Because we know. We know that you are God. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. He's with us, people's church. He's with us. So let's trust him. And let's rest in his presence.
still and know. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. Lord, we rest to know that you're our Redeemer, you're our refuge. And Lord, at times you are our, our restorer, because we all need you, Lord. And Lord, tonight we've heard your word. Now, Lord, let us hold it in our hearts and let us live it out in our lives. Lord, we just commit the rest of the week to you. And we pray you'll bring us out in Lord's Day that we'll celebrate around your table. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will be with us in a very special way this week. And I pray that you'll meet every single need, Lord. Touch every life. And may the name of Jesus Christ be glorified in all of our hearts. Take us home, Lord, in peace and in safety. And may we be still and know that you are still God. In Jesus' name.